Instagram. Go full screen with that. Dude, Jesus Christ. Dude, Smoking that's... causes blindness. <laughs> Who the fuck's ever gone blind? And look, Smoking causes throat and mouth cancer. Oof. Brand. You see? Brand. And, and in brand the same variant. fucking font. Wow. Oh my God. It's so fucking hilarious, wow. dude. I laugh and it's, so And hard. it doesn't work. Dude, it, and it doesn't keep people from buying it. That's it what's hilarious. Work. And then, dude, that, that, I mean, imagine that. Imagine picking up a new pack every day. <laughs> that is so fucking bizarre. They, That's they got so straight bizarre. Up, they got dead babies. They Smoking got fucking, causes emphysema. Grab me every, a pack of those. <laughs> dude, every single one of them is so fucking hilarious. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've seen um, in England they have a big picture of like people that have you know like lung cancer and shit on the cover, <coughs> and, it, and it says smoking will kill you. But they don't have this shit. What the <laughs> fuck? It causes Dude. peripheral vascular disease. It makes your feet rot, gangrene. Dude, there was the, 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 the most tame picture I saw on oh. a pack of cigarettes was um, it was a picture of a toilet with <laughs> with blood in the water. And I forget what, what the point was on that one, but cigarettes make your asshole bleed. <laughs> Isn't it crazy that that doesn't even work? Like you, right. you're selling oh, yeah. someone something that you're showing them all the terrible right. shit that it could do, and everybody's like, "Yeah, worth it." Right. Worth it for a puff. I, I know. I used to be convinced. I remember Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew used to pester me for, like to try to get me on that celebrity rehab show before I was sober. Right. And he had another project which was trying to. Uh, it was focused on getting people to quit smoking cigarettes. Were you smoking at the time? I, I smoked for fucking 17 years. I started smoking when I was 16 and stopped when I was 33. Whoa. Yeah, 17 years I fucking smoked, man. Do you feel any ill effects of it now at 43? Mm, uh, almost 43. And How's your cardio? I think it's pretty good. What what fucked up my cardio was all that nitrous oxide, dude. <laughs> I fucked up my dude. I went I went through those Whippet cartridges. Yeah. There's 24 per box and there's 25 boxes per case. So per case there's 600 cartridges and it was not unusual for me to go through 600 in like 24 hours, 24 to 36 <gasps> hours. What? I I I I went I, I I took every measure to try to limit like the fucking air that went into my lungs to try to make it like all nitrous oxide <laughs> like i was the whole time i'm holding i'm holding in a lung full of that shit and i'm just with my, my fucking can the the canister from starbucks and shit i'm just, i was like a fucking wizard at like loading up six into while holding the last fucking ones you know and and dude that was when all the all the crazy shit would go down because i would be like awake on cocaine for three days and inhaling nothing but nitrous oxide <laughs> and at that point is when shit starts popping off and people <laughs> people are people are walking around my apartment who are never physically there oh, you know so i was seeing a bunch of shit oh dude like actual fucking people man i watched a dude walk through my apartment and fucking pick up pick up my bong and take a hit and blow out smoke and fucking then like put it down and just the dude walked through the wall he was never fucking there ever Whoa. I had but I he had, looked as real as I do or dude, Jamie I, does yeah, dude, I had fucking like tactile hallucinations I had fucking you could feel things big time dude big, like what because, kind of because, because here's like here's my whole thing and, and I kind of still believe this to this day is you know that like our little our little uh <clears throat> three-dimensional experience is is very uh, small small part of what's going on in the universe right there's right. Like, there's dimensions there's you know all frequencies everything and that like that if you do enough drugs like um that the barriers between these different compartments of the universe and become eroded somehow you know like i started hearing voices and and to an extent i fucking believe still that that shit was real like uh these spirits that were fucking talking to me i'm hearing the voices like i had a conversation with a friend of mine who sells weed about a, a, a very similar thing where i was saying that i think that something happens when you that when you smoke pot it's not just that you get high but that the way you interface with the world changes and then the world changes because of that not not the world changes like a world changes for you or for him but the world that i'm experiencing is sure. different yeah, like in the quantum physics kind of sense. I don't know. I'm too stupid for that. Right, but, me but too. But what I'm saying is that my feeling about the world is that when you when you change the way your brain <clears> works, <throat> which is essentially what you do when you get really high, and you change the way you think about the world, I think the world that you experience is different. Sure. It's like, you know, like people think, like this is a very simplistic way of looking at it, but it's sort of parallel. You know, some people think, oh, the world sucks, everything sucks, and their life always sucks. 
and then there's people that are always super positive and super happy and their life is always happy. Sure. Mm -hmm. There's something about when you get like really high like especially marijuana because marijuana is a sensitivity drug it's almost like the opposite of a lot of drugs because a lot of drugs make you insensitive like alcohol makes you blunt right you, you're not aware of people looking at you you don't give a fuck you're like whoa you get drunk you get loud and you're crazy you're, you, your social cues get skewed you don't see marijuana is the opposite marijuana you get like really aware of other people people will call it paranoid because you start thinking about all these possibilities <clears throat> that you never thought of before but I feel like the way you interface with the world becomes very different you're aware of all these different possibilities you start thinking about things that you fucked up when you were in high school you know you start oh, thinking dude, of mushrooms are the worst for that too. oh yeah oh sure yeah, yeah oh yeah. god I made a mistake make you accountable I get so introspective. I mean, I, it's been forever since. But is it but too introspective? I got, I got too introspective. But how, why, how too? Like just, just start picking myself apart, like, uh, and you know, putting myself on trial in a sense. Right. You know, like uh, just too introspective, where I've just like d determined that I just suck. You know. Well, maybe that's just a t perspective. Like, I think the introspective aspect of it, one of the reasons why it comes up, it feels like to me, is because there's a bunch of shit about yourself that you don't like, but you don't address. Right, and okay. so then it, it forces you, hey, to, in order to truly live in the moment, you have to be balanced. You have to be like, I've uh -huh. looked at it all, and I've, I understand I've made mistakes, and here's where I'm at. But if you've never looked at yourself, if you've never looked at those mistakes, then you you, sure. you have like this backlog right. of shit you have to deal with. Right, and, and I agree with that like 100%. You're in debt. <laughs> I you know? agree, agree with that, except when it becomes just a morbid fucking flogging of oneself. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which, which For is, sure. Which is, what, which is what it would come to. But I feel like that morbid <laughs> flogging of yourself comes from you, like the, the, the debt analogy is a good analogy. Because if you're in like massive debt and you go to spend money, you're like, oh, I don't even have any money. How am I spending this money? Whereas right. if you're even and you go to spend the money, you're like, no big deal. I'm just spending some money. It's normal, right? right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that when you don't have an accounting of who you are and what you've right. done, and especially mm -hmm. I think the big one is your effect on other people. Right. You know, that's the one that comes up with me on mushrooms or on, on pot, especially on edibles. It's like how I've interacted with other people. And even if I thought it was justified, uh, and maybe I was justified, when, when it comes up on pot, especially on edibles. The big that's the for me at least that's where I feel like the most accountable. And I have to think about like my behavior the most. Well, I always great. feel like with the edible thing, it always feels like could I have done better? It, mm -hmm. Instead of just being like was I okay? Like yeah, that guy was being a dick to you. Yeah, fuck him. It's never that. It's always like maybe I could have caught on earlier to how he was feeling and right. reassessed how I was communicating with him and instead of being defensive or aggressive right I mean, maybe I could have handled it better that, well hey man sounds like you're working a great spiritual program with your edibles <laughs> <laughs> well, I try to do it all the time but <clears throat> when, sure. I'm, when I'm with edibles like I've said this before and people go oh no but I think pot makes you a better person I really do, because I think all that responsibility I, you know, I and accountability. I, I wish I could smoke pot, but you know my pot bone's no, connected don't. to my booze bone, and my booze you. bone's connected to my. This you don't thing. have to. Right. Look, you you don't honestly. No one has to do anything. I get as much high and as much um, mental clarity from yoga as I do from anything. I really Dope. do. Dope. I, I mean, if if someone told me uh, I couldn't smoke pot for the rest of my life, but I could do yoga. Or I could just smoke pot for the rest of my life and not do yoga. I think I would take the yoga. Wow. I really do. All right. Because yoga gives me, um, I mean, I, I love the feeling of pot. I really do. But yoga gives me um, a relaxation when it's over. Like a, there's a clarity that comes from things that is like it's friend. Like after like post yoga class, those are like the, that is the friendliest, nicest group of fucking people. Go stand. You want to meet some nice folks? Right. Stand outside of a yoga class when the <laughs> yoga class is exiting. Right. You'll meet like the most balanced, nice people because they drained all the bullshit out of themselves. Hey, can we hit pause so I can take a leak? Already? I know. I animal. told you. You're dude. an animal. Go. We're not. We're not pausing though. <laughs>